I don't read enough poetry. <laughs> Genuinely, like, I love poetry, but I can't think of the last time I went out and bought or read a poetry collection. It's funny, I think recently I've been really gravitating towards novels, like, I just, that's all I really buy, that's all I really read. And I'm kind of asking myself, why? Because one of the things that I love about a good novel is when it feels really poetic and lyrical. And so I'm kind of wondering to myself why I don't buy and read more poetry collections, right? And so, I think that's an excuse to go to the bookstore, right? I think I need some more poetry in my life. And so I thought that that's what I would do today. I thought I would bring you along to the bookstore and we'd find some poetry to read. I feel like I regularly look up online um, poetry. I always read the like poem of the day on Poetry Foundation. Whenever someone posts a poem like on their Instagram story, I stop whatever I'm doing and read it. And so I'm wondering to myself why I don't read more poetry collections. I feel like I read like one-off poems, but never a full collection. So I think that should change immediately. Welcome to the video. <laughs> I have class, I'm just getting ready right now to head to my writing class, but the Strand Bookstore is on my way home, which is like this huge bookstore with, they say 18 miles of bookshelves, which is insane. And I feel like some of those miles must include poetry, right? <laughs> and so I think I'm gonna go to class and then on my way home, I'm gonna stop in the bookstore and I'll take you along with me and then we'll do a little poetry haul. How does that sound? I don't know about you, but it sounds great to me. So hello, welcome back. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. I'm gonna go to school and I'll see you when I'm finished. Talking of poetry collections, my friend Dakota's book just got nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards, which is crazy and so cool. All you need to do to vote in the opening round is head to the poetry collection on the Goodreads website and then scroll down to On Sun Swallowing by Dakota Warren. And please, please, please vote. I would appreciate it so much, as would Dakota. Go and vote for this amazing, brilliant, exquisite and brutal poetry collection. And also you should read it, it's really, really great. Okay, so I'm back from class and back from the bookstore. I am six books richer and a hundred dollars poorer. <laughs> it's me, hi, uh, I'm the problem, it's me. I went to the Strand, aka Heaven on Earth, and I now have six poetry collections. They're upside down. And I thought I would tell you which ones I picked up. Welcome to my poetry book haul. But before I give you a haul, I just wanted to let you know that this video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, basically which means I can continue spending my money on books and therefore funding this channel. So thank you Squarespace, I appreciate it so much. Now Squarespace is the place to go if you are looking to build your own website or online store. You can find this amazing range of templates which are the perfect starting point for creating your own unique website. You can customize it, move things around where you want them and make it something that reflects you and your personality or your brand. There are amazing analytics tools so you can see what people are enjoying, what content they want to see more of and maybe what they want to see less of. And there's also the ability to create a blog so you can share what you're working on, share some behind the scenes and let people get to know you a little bit better. And so if this is something that you'd be interested in, if you're looking to create your own website, then you are in luck, my friend, because you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, you can use the code Jack in the books to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, which is cracking news, I think. So thank you so, so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now some books. So firstly, we have Dream of the Divided Field. Love that title. Um, this is by Yan Yi and I will read you the description. From an award-winning poet comes a collection of heartbreak and transitions written with a piercing lyric ferocity. Sold. Sold. Sign on the dotted line, sold. The poems in Yanyi's latest book suggest that we enter and exit our old selves like homes. We look through the windows and recognize some former aspect of our lives that is both ours and not ours. We long for what we had, even as we recognize that we can no longer live there. Yanyi conjures the beloved both within and without us, the beloved we believe we know, the beloved who is never the person we imagine, and the beloved who threatens to erase us, even as we stand before them. How can we carry our homes with us? Informed by Yanyi's experiences of immigration, violent heartbreak, and bodily transition, Dream of the Divided Field explores the contradictions that accompany shifts, 
from one state of being to another. In tender, serene, and ethereal poems, Dream of the Divided Field examines a body breaking down and a body that rebuilds in limitless and boundary-shifting ways. There are homes in memory, homes of love and isolation, lust and alienation, tenderness and violence, suffering and wonder. I thought that sounded great. Also, at The Strand, you get a free um, bookmark with every book, which is fun. That's very sweet. I love that. Although I will be a dog era until the day that I die. Much to the infuriation of everyone I know. Wouldn't it be funny if I just pulled out like five Gabby Hanna poetry collections? Wouldn't we laugh? Wouldn't we chuckle? Anyway, the next book that I bought is So Tall It Ends in heaven. Love this title, this is by Jamie Ringleb, and this is the description. Following the end of a marriage, this book's queer southern speaker tries to restore a relationship with his father. His father lives across an ocean, but more keeps them apart than just that. The father rejected his son long ago after learning that his son is gay. The poems search for answers across the United States and Europe, in and out of historical imagination, as the speaker struggles to separate his understanding of devotion and belonging from the constant losses in his life. Drawing from and subverting the formal traditions of love poems, parables, and elegies, the collection claims a vital space for one's own solace. Nobody will love you like this poem does, the speaker says. Tell this poem what you want, anything. In terms that are ruminative, funny, and tender, Jamie Ringlib's debut collection questions what and whom one lets go of by coming out. Can love, in all its complexities, ever be uncoupled from grief? So there you go, that is so tall, it ends in heaven. Then we have Dorothy Parker, Enough Rope. This is a book of light verse, it says. Known as the wittiest woman in America, Dorothy Parker was also one of the Jazz Age's most beloved poets. Listen, if she's one of the Jazz Age's most beloved poets, she's, it's good enough for me, right? Her light verse, I, I really, is light verse a thing? I've never heard poetry described as light verse, is that, is, is that a thing? It just looks like poetry to me, but you know what? To each their own. If, uh, if someone knows what that means um, specifically, please let me know. I would love to know. Um, anyway, her light verse was regularly published in Vanity Fair, Life, and The New Yorker, and her debut poetry collection, first published in 1926, was a runaway bestseller. The poems in Enough Rope range from light-hearted self-deprecation to acid-tongued satire. Do you see why I bought this? That is why I bought this. All the while gleefully puncturing sentimental cliches about the relations between men and women. Parker's verbal dexterity and cynical humour on full display in this volume are as refreshing and wickedly entertaining as ever. And that, I think, sounds like good fun. So you're coming home with me. Well, you are home with me. Welcome home, Dorothy Parker. <laughs> I'm losing my head. Okay, the next one is actually the reason that I filmed this whole video because <laughs> I really wanted to read this book. This is by Watson Shire and it's called Bless the Daughter Raised by a Voice in Her Head. By the way, poetry collections have the best titles ever. Poems of migration, womanhood, trauma and resilience from the celebrated collaborator on Beyonce's Lemonade and Black is King, award-winning Somali British poet Watson Shire. Mama, I made it out of your home alive, raised by the voices in my head. With her first full-length poetry collection, Watson Shire introduces us to a young girl who, in the absence of a nurturing guide, makes her own way towards womanhood. Drawing from her own life as well as pop culture and news headlines, Shire finds vivid, unique details in the experiences of refugees and immigrants immigrants, mothers and daughters, black women and teenage girls. In Shire's hands, lives spring into fullness. This is a noisy life, full of music and weeping and surahs and sirens and birds. This is a fragrant life, full of blood and perfume and shisha smoke and jasmine and incense. This is polychrome life, full of henna and moonlight and lipstick and turmeric and coal. The long-awaited collection from one of our most exciting contemporary poets, this book is a blessing, an incantatory celebration of resilience and survival. Each reader will come away changed. Holy moly! <laughs> that sounds so good, right? I love Orson Shire's poem, Home. I think about it regularly, and so I was desperate to read this when I saw that it had been released, and that was the reason that I suddenly thought, I don't buy enough poetry. And now, six poem collections sit before me. Thank you, Orson Shire. Everyone say thank you, Orson Shire. <laughs> She is the reason for this video. This one I thought was really interesting. It has a title that says, Other People's Comfort Keeps Me Up at Night. I dropped it. Um, this is by Morgan Parker, and this is the description. The debut collection from award-winning poet Morgan Parker demonstrates why she's become one of the most beloved writers working today. Her command of language is on full display. 
Parker bobs and weaves between humour and pathos, grief and anxiety, Gwendolyn Brooks and Jay-Z, the New York school and reality television. She collapses any foolish distinctions between the personal and the political, the high and the low. Other People's Comfort Keeps Me Up at Night not only introduces an essential new voice to the world, it contains everything readers have come to love about Morgan Parker's work. So... I have nothing else to say, that kind of said it all. I am intrigued. And then finally, this is a book that I had my eye on for a while, I keep seeing it everywhere, and I wanted to own it, I wanted to read it. This is Winter Recipes from The Collective, a collection of poems by Louise Gluck, who is the winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, and so I thought it would be great to read her poems. Louise Gluck's 13th book of poems is among her most haunting. Here, as in the wild iris, there is a chorus, but the speakers are entirely human, simultaneously spectral and ancient. Winter Recipes from the Collective is chamber music, an invitation into that privileged world realm, <laughs> it says realm, small enough for the individual instrument to make itself heard, its line sustained, carried, and then taken up by the next instrument, spirited, while at the same time being large enough to contain a whole lifetime, the inconceivable gifts and losses of old age, the little princesses rattling in the back of a car, an abandoned passport, the ingredients of an invigorating winter sandwich, a sister's death, the joyful presence of the sun, its brightness measured by the darkness it casts. Some of you will know what I mean, the poet says, by which she means some of you will follow me. Here is the sustaining presence, the voice containing all our lifetimes, all the world each more beautiful than the last. This magnificent book couldn't have been written by anyone else, nor could it have been written by the poet at any other time in her life. So there you go. Those are the six poetry collections that I purchased on my little trip, on, on my, I, why have I suddenly lost the ability to speak? On my little trip to the Strand bookstore. And I'm gonna get started with this one right now. I forgot to say goodbye. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring it and all the best, stay in touch. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.